Now, here are tonight's moderators. From Northern News Now, Laura Lee and Dan Wolf. Good evening, I'm Laura Lee. And I'm Dan Wolf. Thank you for joining us tonight. We are proud to bring you a live debate between the two candidates running for Duluth mayor. Yeah, we have incumbent Mayor Emily Larson and challenger Roger Reinert here with us in the studio tonight. Both will be on the ballot on Tuesday, November 7th. Over the next hour, we'll hear from both candidates about the biggest issues facing our city and how they would plan to solve it if elected. But first, we wanted to lay out some of the rules for tonight's debate. We'll start with a one-minute opening statement from both candidates. From there, they'll both be given a minute to respond to each of our questions. Any rebuttals will be granted at the moderator's discretion and would be 30 seconds long. Uh, candidates can request a rebuttal by raising their hand. Uh, finally, the candidates will be given 30 seconds for a closing statement. And we will be addressing the candidates by their preferred method tonight. That will be Mayor Larson and Roger. We'll start things off with opening statements from both candidates. We'll start with Mayor Larson, who won a coin toss before the broadcast. Mayor Larson, you have one minute. Thank you. I'm Emily Larson, and I'm honored to be your mayor. I moved to Duluth at age 17 to go to Scholastica, and I stayed. I live in the hillside with my husband of 24 years in the house where we raised our two sons now grown. I've been mayor for two terms, and I'm seeking re-election because the progress we're making together is worth fighting for and expanding. We have increased street work by 850%, going from two miles a year when I took office to 17 this year, 20 next year, 50 the next three. We cut the city's greenhouse gas emissions by 32%. We've cut citywide crime by 22%. We've added 1,700 new units of housing, more than has been done in that same time period in three decades. Together, we navigated a devastating global pandemic, and now we're in our fourth straight year of record private sector development and investment. Thank you for understanding the urgency of this election and this moment. I'm proud and grateful Thank to be you. here. Thank you, Mayor Larson. Roger, you have a minute for your opening statement. Good evening, Duluth. I encourage you to pay attention to what you hear tonight and also what you don't. I won't tell you I'm the best and perhaps just as importantly, that someone else is not. You won't even hear me use the word opponent. The selection is not personal, and how we choose to campaign matters. What I will say is that I love Duluth with a passion, and we are long overdue for a meaningful conversation about where we are and where we are headed. Duluth, in thousands of conversations, you have said you are ready for something different, that you want a mayor and administration that listens and cares about what you care about housing across all income levels, growing our commercial tax base, streets, downtown Duluth, and affordable property taxes, and not just because it's campaign season. There are practical and tangible steps the next mayor and administration can take in each of these areas, and it's time we do. No magic wands required. This is our 10th debate, a direct result of the first meaningful election thank for mayor in 16 years. Thank you so much. Roger, thank you. We'll get into the questions now for tonight's debate. Again, each of you will have one minute to respond. And we begin with something that's been in the news of late. Recently, DAC leaders announced they're having financial difficulties and requested a $1 million line of credit from the city. About a week later, they announced several layoffs. How concerned are you about what's happening at the DAC? And what do you feel the city's role is in supporting the facility? Uh, Roger, we'll start with you. You have one minute. Right. Well, obviously, I had an opportunity to be with the DAC during the darkest uh, chapter at the height of COVID. Um, this is a critical regional asset for us. The DEC's role is to support an entire industry, to bring in the large groups, the large activities, the large events that really benefit our food and hospitality industries. So supportive of the line of credit as it navigates its way forward um, and applaud the board of directors who are working actively with the executive director to figure out what those next steps look like. The DEC's challenges are twofold. One. Uh, right-sizing the staff so that it aligns with the revenue sources that it has coming forward, both earned revenue as well as the tourism taxes that are dedicated to the DEC, as well as then taking a look at what its capital management and capital asset plans are moving forward. And that's going to be an ongoing relationship for the next administration, whomever is mayor. Thank you, Roger. Mayor Larson, how concerned are you about what's happening at the DEC? What do you feel the city's role is in supporting the facility? Thank you for the question. I approach the deck in the same way we have approached the zoo. 
which was slated for failure and closure in Spirit Mountain, which was falling well behind the budget. These are both city assets and partnership assets that are really important. The deck is exactly the same. Full support for the line of credit, full support for figuring out the underlying ways that we can pull the deck up and out. It's a treasure, we need it, we support it. My opponent was in a position of leadership as an interim director at a time when some of this could have been identified. I am proud that when Governor Tim Walls called me and asked, where do you, Mayor Larson, want to put COVID testing and inoculation site in the city of Duluth. We'll put it where you think it makes the most sense. My answer was the deck. I'm proud of that answer. I am really grateful that Interim Director Reinert was able to uh, take that and move the deck forward during that time. But there are underlying issues that could also have been identified through his public leadership in that role. Mayor Larson, thank you. Uh, we have a rebuttal here with, uh, right now we have, we have a rebuttal with Roger Reinert. Roger, you have 30 seconds. Great, thank you. Not as much a rebuttal, it's just a clarification. So I stepped in at the deck at the request of the board and, and uh, frankly of Mayor Larson to try and provide some leadership at a really critical time. 11 months, when I came into the deck, uh, it was losing approximately $250,000 a month with a $1.2 million reserve. When I left 11 months later, it had more money than it had when I began. And the deck, because it's an authority, didn't qualify for any uh, federal money. There was no payroll protection. There were no COVID uh, rescue funds. Thank you. 30 seconds are up. Our next topic is a very important one, housing. The housing crisis, as we know, has existed in Duluth for a long time. Northern News Now just did an exclusive report on this very issue just last night. We know in the last year, progress has been made to create more affordable housing. But we've also reported on plans to create more apartment-style housing downtown. However, the city's top employers say they're having a very difficult time attracting workers to the city because of a lack of single-family homes what why does that type of housing continue to be lacking and what can be done at the city level to create more we're gonna begin with you mayor Larson thank you for the question first of all I want to correct the information because the reporting actually does not tell the story from the housing indicator report the net gain of single-family housing in my seven-year tenure is actually close to 170 single-family houses the net gain of housing overall and this is inclusive of demolition, um, is, 19, is excuse me, 1,700, 1,900 units of housing overall, 1,700 if you include demolition. So I would be happy to provide the housing indicator report, which is public and ties back to the permitting and all of the paperwork necessary. But going back to the question, what we need to do is be absolutely tenacious about every single opportunity we have. Leicester Golf is a perfect example. We have scalable land, which is very difficult for us to come by. Uh, we have an RFP. We have offered it numerous times. It's a perfect fit for housing, for expanding the tax base, for building and retail and connectivity. Uh, but I would be happy to share greater clarification and, and more accurate numbers for housing. Mayor Larson, thank you. Roger, you have one minute with the same question about housing. Sure. Right now, why does that type of housing continue to be lacking in the city and what can be done at the city level to create more single family homes? Sure, thank you. First of all, a great story last night. And whether that number is 36 or whether it's over 100, uh, and the 36 number reported here as well as in the Star Tribune, so two credible news sources apparently getting the, the number wrong. The issue is that our housing market is stuck in the middle. And the story was spot on in two ways. Number one, our top priority around housing has to be for purchase single family homes. And number two, the single greatest thing that the city can do is get involved in the infrastructure side. When you sit with builders, they will tell you two things. Number one, before they even start building a home, they often have $100,000 in because of streets and utilities and site prep. And that's a place that the city can be helpful because it's not the city's job to build homes. It is our job to do the infrastructure. And secondly, provide a better environment to get those processes uh, moving along. That story last night highlighted that as well. We continue to be a difficult place to do business and to build homes. Roger, right. thank you. And uh, Mayor Larson, you'd like to offer a rebuttal. I would. Thank you. Uh, accuracy in numbers is incredibly important. Pay attention to the facts. Pay attention to what is accurate. We don't get to make up things to support a narrative. We absolutely have to tie it back to what's accurate and what correlates to the actual data. 
I'm proud that as a community, we have a housing trust fund that we are expanding into new areas. I'm thrilled that employers are here to step up in a meaningful way. And to be honest, we need a mayor who is hopeful about our future and not tied back to an old narrative that we're a bad place to do business. Thank you, Mayor Larson. Now, we also opened up an opportunity to viewers to submit questions to their candidates, and tonight we will share many of them. Our first comes from Heather M. Heather says, mental health and addiction undoubtedly contribute to the homeless population and the decay of certain neighborhoods, particularly downtown. What are your plans to address these issues, and how will those plans be funded? Roger, we begin with you. All right. Uh, thanks, Heather. That's a great question. And it's not just downtown. We're seeing it in other neighborhoods as well. And really, we have to talk about three different things. We have to talk about doing a better job of connecting to the existing resources we have. Um, and that is uh, through uh, um, or staff like our substance uh, use recovery team. We have to do a better job in connecting to other resources, uh, organizations that are outside the city hall structure. Um, one that I've talked about lately is the Teen Challenge Program, which is already located downtown and has a, a proven track record of just doing great work in this area. And number three, a model that I think is something that actually both of us agree on, and that's something like the San Marco, a project that I was supportive of, voted in favor of when I was on the city council, and has a really proven track record and support from our public safety team in terms of working with those who struggle with chronic alcoholism. So in there is a model also for those that are dealing with um, substance use, mental health, opioid, fentanyl addiction. Thank you, Roger. Mayor Larson, what are your plans to address these issues and how will those plans be funded? Thank you for your question, Heather. I appreciate it. As a former social worker, I understand that these are very complicated scenarios that people are living. People with addictions are our mothers and fathers, our sisters and brothers. We want them safe. We want them healthy. We want them on a path of wholeness. Here's what we're doing at the city right now. With coordination with the Duluth City Council, we have invested $600,000 annually into mental health and chemical health response. We are the first uh, police department in the nation to have a nurse on staff. We are responding with our humanity to people and to connect them immediately with services. I am in full support of the San Marco and was on the board when we actually formulated that vision. We need two more of those, one for mental health and one for chemical health. Now, in the past when this question has come up, my opponent has spoken uh, about wanting to bring back a regional mental health center. And I just want to say tonight, be, that is a terrible idea to go back to permanently institutionalizing people who don't fit our norms. And uh, Roger, you'd like to rebuttal. Yeah, I think it's just important to clarify what I have talked about is the uh, absence that the regional treatment center system has um, caused for us. Right now, where we see long-term care being provided is in the emergency room and too often in jail cells, neither of which are effective nor are they um, efficient, and they're not respective of the individual. So as I've talked about that, I've talked about working with the state and being an advocate for reestablishing re -establishing a state mental health system that can be more than just an individual community supports. Roger, thank you. Our next question is regarding public safety. What do you see as the biggest public safety challenge Duluth faces right now, and how would you solve it? We're going to begin with you, Mayor Larson. Uh, well, first of all, public safety is imperative. We all have to feel good about where we live, where we work, where we play. I am really proud of the investments we've made to increase wages for both police and fire, 8%. And I will say that's in partnership with the council, so I want to be clear about who's, who's doing what and who's supporting what, but I have signed those actions. And supporting the gear that our, um, that our public safety folks need. Uh, we are working through $3 million direct allocation that our staff are working with us to spend and prioritize. Uh, we need to support our staff at every turn that we get. Certainly wage increases are one of that. Building trust in community and helping the community also learn greater trust with our public safety. This is inclusive of the racial bias audit that we've done, releasing stop data, building trusting authentic relationships across the community, and doing that in ways where people see themselves in the department expanding our hiring practices and supporting our chiefs every single step of the way which is what I'm so proud to have a history of doing. Mayor Larson thank you. Roger the same question. Sure well first of all I'm just thrilled to have the endorsement of both Duluth Fire and Duluth Police. I've never seen the two organizations work as closely together as a coordinated um, public safety response team uh, as they are right now. Uh, unfortunately, that's because of a lot of persistent problems that they continue to need to face, but the benefit is the great teamwork. 
you know, the big issue is attracting and retaining um, talent. And we, we have made pro pro progress in some of those numbers, but we still have a long way to go. And even when we get people, um, part of the challenge is retaining people. So those salary improvements are great, but the threats to benefits have also been detrimental in terms of us trying to retain those staff. And thirdly, I would just say there's a huge opportunity for us as a community to be their partner. In the case of law enforcement, to let cops do cop work. I really want to see the police reserve reestablished. I want to see us invigorate our citizen patrols. And I also think uh, we, we want to better advertise the Citizen Academy so those of us learn what they're thank going you, Roger. through. Thank you, Roger. And Mayor Larson, you'd like to rebuttal. Yeah, I just want to thank my opponent for recognizing that our two top safety, public safety folks and their departments are working incredibly well together. They are working closer and more and in stronger partnership than I have ever seen. A lot of that is also based on the equipment that we're buying, the strategies that we are using, and we're following the lead of leadership within these divisions. This is the leadership that I bring as mayor to this community. It is hiring outstanding leaders, empowering them, and moving out of their way so that they can motivate their teams. Thank you, Mayor Larson. Our next viewer submitted question comes from Kate R. in Woodland. She says, I've noticed an increase in panhandling in various mm -hmm. parts of Duluth as well as tent cities. How will you address the panhandling and homelessness in Duluth? What steps will you take to address these issues? Roger, we begin with you. Sure. Uh, you know, first of all, we've had a fairly hands-off policy around that. And I think it's clear to understand that while panhandling is in and of itself, free speech, there are things that we can do as a community around time and place. And really that has to do about public safety regarding both the individuals as well as those of us who might be driving or walking or moving around. Um, that's uh, busy intersections, freeway on and off ramps, um, places where there are a lot of turning actions. Secondly, I think there's an opportunity for us to talk about why we want to encourage people to give to organizations that are supportive of individuals who might be in need, whether that's food or shelter, versus directly to individuals. And we have great organizations within our community that we can be giving to. And thirdly, we come back to a question that we've already started to address, and that is, where do we have the opportunity to address some of those mental health and addiction issues with, which often underlie the behaviors that we're seeing in our community? Thank you, Roger. Mayor Larson, how will you address the panhandling homelessness in Duluth? What steps will you take to address these issues? Well, first of all, I don't like seeing it. And I don't think anybody does. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good to have people in your community not have the resources that they need. And it's true, panhandling has been approved or has is recognized as a First Amendment uh, freedom of speech expression by the United States Supreme Court. There's very, to be honest, there's very little we can do to actually control the ability for people to exist and do that. Can we address the problematic and threatening behaviors? Yes, and we do. And thank you to the increased uh, se security that we are providing through the clean and safe team and through increased patrols. Finally, as it relates to the homelessness and encampments, I have a very clear policy. It is not something that I allow. I also personally choose not to support panhandling. I have other things that I do that I feel more comfortable doing. As we address homelessness, we have 18 staff who meet three times a week with the city, with CHUM, with the state, to get people housed, to get them moving, to get them safe. That is the strategy we're going to continue to invest in moving forward. Thank Mayor you. Larson, thank you. Uh, we do have a rebuttal with Roger in response. You have 30 seconds, Roger. Sure. I just want to um, first um, give a shout out to MnDOT who has really worked proactively where we've seen encampments along um, Asaba Avenue. I think they've really been uh, handled that in a great way. Secondly, and maybe this is just the background I have as an attorney, like, there is free speech at play, but we do have things that we can do around time and place restrictions, especially with busy intersections. That is something that other communities across the country have done. Sounds good. Thank you, Roger. Mayor Larson, you have 30 seconds to rebut that. Yes, thank you. I will say we, as an attorney, um, I would expect that uh, research would be done on this. All of those cities are having them challenged. They're having them challenged for reasons of free speech. I trust my city attorney who is innovative and looks around the country for other models. I trust my public safety team to do doing the very best that they can in the very same way that I trust you as residents care deeply about all members of our community, even when we're seeing things that aren't comfortable or we want to change. 
Mayor Larson, thank you so much. And we know this is a very uh, hot topic, but we have several issues we have to get to, so we're going to move on to the next question. In the most recent census data, Duluth grew by about 400 people over the past decade. That's 0.5% growth. That compares to a 14% growth in Rochester, 5% in St. Cloud, and 17% in Moorhead. Why are we growing at a much slower rate, and what needs to be done to change that? Mayor Larson, we're going to start with you. You have one minute. We need housing. We need a place for people to go and live. That is the paramount need that we have. We have added 1,700 new units of housing. That is more than has been added in that same time period in three decades, and we still need more. People are moving to the peripheral areas because that is where we have housing. There's no question about it. So what we're doing at the city of Duluth, I convened a mayor's task force on housing. From that came a $16 million housing trust fund. We've invested 19 additional million dollars directly into affordability through ARP. We have changed zoning. We have made allowances for additional dwellings. And we are being absolutely tenacious about every single area where we can be doing housing from Leicester to downtown to the housing study that we just established. 2,000 units could be built into our downtown to the West Duluth Kmart site. Every single place has to be 100% prioritized. We've got a sense of place. We need a sense of home for more people. Mayor Larson, thank you. Roger, the same question. Why are we growing at a much slower rate and what needs to be done to change that? Yeah, I, and first of all, it's not 0.5, it's 0 0.05. One half of 1%, 400 people over 10 years. And we actually had a press conference out of City Hall to celebrate mm -hmm. 400 people. It should be concerning because that's not actually growth, that's stagnation. And you appropriately noted what the other regional centers are doing, but I think it's also important to look at what our neighboring communities are doing. From Esco to Hermantown to now the city of Rice Lake, they're all seeing 7 to 10% growth. And it's because it's not because of number of units, it's because of single pam family homes for purchase. And that's, again, with your story last night, why employers are willing to actually put money on the table, especially around the infrastructure issue, to create the housing that their employers need. And if we don't break where we're stuck in the mid-market with this for purchase single-family homes, we are going to continue to have this problem, and we're going to continue to be limited in terms of our community's growth. And again, that's not growth. 0.05% is stagnation. Thank you, Roger. Mayor Larson, uh, you'd like to offer a rebuttal. I would. I will say I was so proud to stand on the steps of City Hall and celebrate progress and growth every single turn that we have. This community deserves a mayor that is celebrating the first growth we have seen in decades. In decades. Is it as big as we want? No. But why would we ever dismiss that? Why would we ever use a narrative that we're not good enough or that the communities around us are better? We need a mayor who puts us first in every single win is something we celebrate. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Larson. Uh, and Roger, you'd like to offer a remark. Sure. Because it's important for us to be honest. And sometimes the truth can be a little bit uncomfortable, but that doesn't mean we're being naysayers or we're being negative or we're moving backwards. 400 should be concerning. We were once the third largest city in the state of Minnesota. We're now fifth. And honestly, folks, we're within 1,000 people of falling to sixth. Again, we have to be growing, and I think the question is a good one. Why aren't we? And we don't have the places that people want to purchase to make their homes, so they're going to our near neighbors. Thank you, Roger. Now, Duluth, as we're all painfully aware, is coming off its snowiest winter on record. Uh, the last season included several big storms that had residents in some neighborhoods voicing frustrations with what seemed like slow or delayed removal process by city road crews. Uh, what's the reason for this and what can and should be done to expedite the snow plowing process? Roger, you have one minute. Sure, thanks. And I know what we're going to hear when we get the response is that I single-handedly decimated our uh, plowing staff. But the reality is that right now we don't have enough staff. Um, and when we have one that goes out, that part of town just doesn't get plowed. And so we have to wait for the other parts of town to get plowed uh, to come back in and do that part. And that's concerning because we see places like Harbor Highlands, which is very close to where I live, not get plowed out at all. And these are oftentimes families and kids who have some of the, you know, the most need to be at school. It's not just about education. It's about being a safe place to be. It's also about um, getting their meals. And a tool that we didn't use last year, which I think we should use, 
is a snow emergency ordinance, our snowiest winter ever, and we didn't use it. And why does the snow emergency ordinance matter? Because it's our opportunity as residents to help out our plow drivers. When we get our vehicles out of the way, they can plow curb to curb and they can do it faster and more efficiently. Thank you, Roger. Mayor Larson, what's the reason for some of those uh, plowing delays and what can and should be done to expedite the snow plowing process? Well, first of all, thank you to city staff. They did incredible work last winter. I live in the hillside, which is a very frustrating neighborhood to plow, and I was impressed, and I'm so grateful for our staff. And so, first of all, thank you for what you do. And yes, you are going to hear from me that the last time my opponent was in a position of local government power, he chose to cut the street staff and the plow staff. And that's important to note because he's now claiming to be the one to fix it and do it differently and do it better without resources, specifics, practical or tangible steps, which is what he has been promising he could deliver. So here's how we improve. My budget this year provides equipment. We have money in there for more snow plows. We right now are spending about 70% of our fleet dollars on repairs. We need to get that to 30%. We are behind in investing in our equipment and we will absolutely be able to expand and get more streets done more quickly when we have a full fleet. Mayor Larson, thank you. We have an opportunity for Roger to rebuttal. Here you have 30 seconds, Roger. Sure. Thanks. Um, and first of all, and I know Mayor Larson was once a city councilor, the council doesn't actually allocate positions. The council does line item, budget items. And secondly, when I served on the council, we were facing difficult financial times, and we were facing them every year that I was on the council. Not just about LGA, but also about unfunded retiree health care mandates, about sanitary sewer overflows that threatened to bankrupt the city. So yeah, we had to make some difficult budget decisions, and we prioritize public safety Roger. and then public works. Thank you. Mayor Larson, you have a chance at a rebuttal for 30 seconds. When you're a mayor, every year is a tough budget year. When you're a counselor, every year is a tough budget year. And the decisions you make and the record you have matters. I have a record. I am proud of it. My opponent has one too. And it's, I, I expect accountability for both of us when there is something that somebody you know appreciates doesn't appreciate wants to see different it's important to talk about these details and how how will something be different moving forward mayor larson thank you uh, roger we'll give you 30 seconds to respond because this was sure. meant for thank you thank you um one i just encourage everyone to go look the data is in uh, public information the mm -hmm. first year I was on the council, we had just over $9 million in the public works um, budget. When I left the council, we had a little over $10 million in the public works budget. Again, how the administration uses that in our strongest strong mayor form of government is different than what the council allocates. Secondly, rogerforduluth.com backslash issues. Like there are steps there around streets and around plowing. I just invite the public to go check that out. Roger, thank you. And, and staying on this topic about public roads and streets, we know potholes, that's a mm -hmm. huge issue as well. That remains a favorite gripe of Duluth residents currently. The city has a plan to fix 19 miles of roads next year. Is that enough? Is there a way to do more and in a more timely manner? Mayor Larson, we're gonna start with you. It's actually 20 miles next year. So every mile counts. I know it counts if you live on that mile that we're gonna be getting there. So yes, when I took office, we were doing two miles of road a year. We were doing two miles of road per year. We now have 850% increase, 17 miles last year, 20 miles next year. Every year we're getting better, smarter, faster because we're able to catch up. The last time my opponent was in a position of local government, he approved a street plan that did one mile one year. And that wasn't an unallotment year. Every budget year is a tough budget. How we spend our money matters. You are letting me know that streets are a priority. I would love to do more, and I am unwilling to put our community at financial risk. Issuing bond debt is how we got into this mess in the first place. We are pay as we go with a cash system at an 850% increase. We're gonna keep doing more, and guess what? We're adding lead lines and utilities into that mix. It's an incredible system. Mayor Larson, thank you. Roger, the same question. Again, we are dealing with public roads and how to fix them. Currently, the city has a plan to fix 20 miles of roads next year. Is that enough? Is there a way to do more in a more timely manner? Sure. I mean, clearly it's not enough, and clearly the pay-as-we-go system is insufficient. You know, when we look at the 20 miles next year, 
It's followed quickly by 14.6 and 14.7 the year after. So we peak in an election year and then drop and then drop again. You know, <laughs> before I came, I brought a little piece of the street that's right outside my own home. Potholes and filling potholes is not our measure of success. And looking at how other units of government do this and do it well, I don't think is a failure. You know, when we look at one of our key partners, St. Louis County, who we also contribute property taxes to, they will say bond against the half cent sales tax. They built up $68 million, they spent it in three years, um, and now primarily spend their money on maintaining instead of rebuilding. And what they straight up said was, if you don't do that, you will never get ahead of the hill of diminishing returns. And I think we all see that as we drive around Duluth uh, and look at the condition of our streets. Thank you, Roger. Mayor Larson, uh, you'd like to respond? You have 30 seconds. Thank you. Uh, going from 19 to 20 miles uh, in a year is not a campaign stunt. It's just simply making progress and making good on what we're doing. What we're able to do next year is get 20 miles done while also getting 800 lead lines removed. And that's one of the reasons why the next year we're going to get a, a little less of that mileage done because we got to go back and fix the streets that we were just digging up. Uh, so it's important that we talk about how we do that. And again, I am unwilling <laughs> to put our community at financial risk. Thank you, Mayor Larson. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to be right back with much more from both Mayor Emily Larson and Roger Reinert in just a couple of minutes. Stay with us. You deserve a city that's thriving, safe, clean, and changing for the better. When you vote for Roger Reinert, you're voting for Duluth. This has been a paid advertisement by Forever Duluth PAC. Bayfield Apple Fest. We love sharing the stories of your rich history and traditions. It's only fitting that we have the fall temperatures. For me, it's a staple. Like you walk by and you can just smell the black and white fish. Apple Fest is going to be going here for a couple of days now. And come on down and check these guys out. This is the hat. Now, the Brent, Brent pulled it off. I've lost all dignity. Stop it. <laughs> for the best live coverage of what makes the Northland special, continue watching Northern News Now. I only have four seconds to tell you to watch Jeopardy. How'd I do? Chief Meteorologist Adam Lorch, weeknights at 5, 6, and 10 on Northern News Now. Saving money is now more important than ever for seniors. But if you purchased a 995 guaranteed acceptance plan, you could easily find yourself overpaying for very little life insurance coverage. With the 995 rate, a 65-year-old male receives less than $900 in coverage. For $10,000 in coverage, he would pay over $110 a month with a two-year waiting period. Fortunately, with Senior Life Insurance Company, he pays less than $58 a month for $10,000 in protection. There's no waiting period, no medical exam, and he saves over $600 a year by choosing Senior Life. A 65-year-old female saves over $400 a year. Don't overpay for your life insurance. Call now to see how much money you could save with Senior Life. We could help you get cash back from your current overpriced policy. Call now to lock in your coverage and low monthly rate. For your free quote, call now. Welcome back to the Northern News Now 2023 Duluth Mayoral Debate. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us for our live Northern News Now Duluth mayoral debate. We're about a half hour into our hour long program, so we're going to jump right back in with more questions for our candidates, Mayor Emily Larson and Roger Reinert. Uh, our next viewer submitted question comes from Cindy P, a lifelong West Duluth resident. She says, I am very concerned about the neglect of our West Duluth business district and West Duluth as a whole. Uh, she pointed to the empty Kmart building and the loss of community park buildings. Buildings. She says West Duluth deserves to get the same revitalization efforts that have been afforded to the Lincoln Park District and downtown area. Her question is this, as mayor, what plans do you have to help West Duluth finally get the attention it deserves? Roger, you have a minute. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks, Cindy. West Duluth is best Duluth, right? Um, it's my side of town. It's a place that I spend a lot of time. And I want to thank the West Duluth Business Club who had uh, one of these conversations with the two of us and some council candidates uh, recently. So, I mean, the, 
Um, helping with the West Duluth Business District really starts backwards with some things we've already talked about. It's prioritizing the infrastructure that we put in place so that the neighborhoods can thrive and the businesses can grow. You know, frankly, as we look at our community, when we start with the West Duluth Business District, we look at the neighborhoods west. All along the far west, along the river valley, some of our best opportunities for single family housing growth within our community. So looping back again to another conversation we had, when we find those opportunities to build homes and add residents within our west Duluth and our far west, neighborhoods, we create the demand, we create the people that are going to help revitalize our um, West Duluth business district. Thank you, Roger. Mayor Larson, now the viewer question was, as mayor, what do you plan to do to help West Duluth get the attention it deserves? Thank you for the question, Cindy. We want every neighborhood to be ones of choice and opportunity where people can live, work, and play. West Duluth is awesome. And here's what we're doing right now. What we did in Lincoln Park is we did some storefront renovation loans, we helped with some financing, and then honestly, we moved out of the way. We moved out of the way and let the private market do its work. And we're starting to see that in West Duluth now. We, we are applying those very, very same tools. And we're seeing some dynamic, inclusive, and diverse growth there, which is really important. But importantly also, here's some of the other things that I've done as your mayor in the past seven years. Uh, we've invested $18 million directly from the half and half corridor tax into West Duluth Parks. We paired that with about $30 million. I helped save the paper plant working with the governor and working with our legislative delegation. We are gonna have a celebration in the next couple of weeks about U.S. Steel, and we have activity happening at, at Atlas. All of that put together is solidifying that important neighborhood, growing the economic base, and giving a sense of place, a sense of hope, and a sense of connection. Mayor Larson, thank you. Not long ago, a group called Duluth Waterfront Collective introduced mm -hmm. a plan to convert the city's current freeway system, which does separate downtown and neighborhoods from Canal and the lake, into a single higher volume, lower speed parkway system. How feasible do you think this is, and is it a project that you'd support and advocate for as mayor? We're gonna begin with, begin with you, Mayor Larson. Yes, thank you. Um, I believe, well, I was told, I don't know if this is true or not, but I was told by the original uh, advocate for this that I was the first elected person on board. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. Uh, it's a great vision, full support. The City Council has also chosen to support it. Here's what I'm actually doing to advance it. I think it is going to take a long time. The NLX took us 20 years. We now have a $194 million project coming into our downtown. Thanks to the advocacy that we framed up with others to get that over the finish line. Uh, and that's the same kind of work it's going to take in that waterfront collective. Now is the time. We are already looking at the library, at the depot, and you go just below that, and there's that connectivity. So yes, it, I do absolutely believe it's possible. I think it's going to take time. I've already talked with MnDOT, with Senator Klobuchar, Senator Smith, both of whom have endorsed me in this race, and with the Federal Transportation Bureau about this project, about what we can do, about how we can get it done, and how we can get it past the finish line. Mayor Larson, thank you. Roger, the same question. Again, when it comes to city infrastructure, how feasible do you think this is, and is it a project you'd support and advocate for as a mayor? Well, I think unfortunately some of the pieces are already in place as we do the free re rebuild. But I just got to say, if you're not following the Duluth Waterfront Collective, do. They're on all the socials. And they will do some things that will make you uncomfortable <laughs> because they think big and they think differently. But, you know, when we did the work in, uh, in Lincoln Park and the freeway overpass came down, I'm on the board of the Children's Museum, and you could finally see from Lincoln Park out to the waterfront. And that waterfront connecti connectivity is so powerful. So pushing us and helping us to think differently is really powerful. You know, Jordan, thanks for all that you do. When I was at the deck, we helped look at what the, the deck waterfront might be and how that might be different. And I remember that kind of got people <laughs> excited because they, were, they weren't sure if that's the, that's the direction they wanted to go in. But we always need to be pushed and we always need to be challenged. And thank you also to Alice, to Casey, and all the um, we Walk group who's gotten together with me a couple times now to talk about how this fits and how our transportation infrastructure might look. Thank you, Roger. Uh, on now to the long, and I mean long, proposed Northern Lights Express rail mm -hmm. project uh, connecting Duluth and the Twin Cities. It now has the state funding it needs to become a reality. According to MnDOT, with 750,000 people estimated to ride the train in its first year, what does the city need to do to make this project successful? Roger, we begin with you. Good. 
Well, I mean, kudos on everyone who's worked for years on the Northern Lights Express. I was an advocate and supporter when I was on the city council. I was actually the city's representative to the Joint Powers Board, was supportive when I was in the legislature as well. So it's exciting to see it finally moving forward. And I know not everybody watching is a fan or is supportive. What I would argue to those who aren't is every transportation connection matters. So when we have freeway, when we have port, when we have the airport, and now when we have passenger rail, that is good for our community and it's good for our region. Kudos Commissioner Keith Nelson, who's been a big advocate of this, to also help connect veterans like myself to the Twin Cities, to the VA hospital, to those appointments that we need to go to that right now we drive and then of course the folks that are going to come up here and visit so it'll be great to see the um, redo that we do with the historic depot as well as adjacent development that might take place with that being a new destination of a major transportation hub thank you roger mayor larson what does the city need to do to make that uh, northern lights express rail project successful well, first of all, we get to do a lot. We have put in a tremendous amount of work to get to this point. Uh, I have been appointing people to the NLX board my entire tenure of mayor to help make sure that the city's interests are represented. I have been directly allocating funding into the lobbying to get it over the finish line. And I also want to thank the partnerships we have. Again, Senator Klobuchar was a big champion with us and for us, as was Governor Walls, who has also supported me and endorsed me in this race. And who stands with you and who helps you get these big projects done with your community really, really matters. What we get to do moving forward is to be intentional about the planning. What is the experience going to be like once people get off that train? We have a group forming right now to talk just about that. Parking, Uber, Lyft. Um, connectivity, how are people actually going to walk over that MnDOT bridge? It doesn't work very well. We have the relationships going with MnDOT to be having those conversations. And also looking at development opportunities like the Ordine building, a perfect example of how to leverage that investment. Mayor Larson, thank you. Roger, you have 30 minutes, or 30 seconds rather, sorry, for a rebuttal. <laughs> Uh, thanks. And not really a rebuttal. I just know that there are folks watching who are not supporters of the project, who are questioning the expense, who are questioning the time. And to all of you, I would say um, the expense is an offset of what we're otherwise going to be doing in private automobiles. And having driven back and forth to the Capitol hundreds of times over several years, it's about all the things you shouldn't be doing in a car that you're doing now. Eat, read, sleep, that you can do on a passenger rail train without endangering yourself or others. Roger, thank you. Our next question. In the mayor's most recent budget proposal, American Rescue Plan money was used to avoid cuts to several departments and to keep property taxes down. Well, that money won't always be there to help. How can we continue to keep the budget fiscally responsible with Without raising property taxes in the years to come we begin with you mayor Larson you have one minute okay there's so much to talk about in one minute first of all the city's portion of your one dollar of one dollar of your property tax 40 cents of that goes to the county about 30 cents goes to the school district 27 cents goes to the city of Duluth I am I will talk with you all day long about our 27 cents we did use some ARP to do some funding of the general fund but very little and that was on purpose and with intention because the cities that relied too heavily on one-time funds whether that is dipping into reserves for ongoing needs or going into you know limited CIT or ARP funds they are on a fiscal cliff right now we just got our double-a bond rating last week that is a huge deal that is a big stamp for the nationally recognized finance team that we have uh, so we work hard to be mindful on taxes uh, and you will find that we are below Minneapolis Hermantown st. Paul Bloomington Brooklyn Park Rochester do we have work to do to make sure you're getting every value for your buck Absolutely. I'm proud of the work that we provide with that 27 cents. Mayor Larson, thank you. Roger Reinert, the same question. Again, that money that won't right. always be there, how can we continue to keep the budget fiscally responsible? You have one minute. Yeah. Well, great question. You know, and in answering this, I want to uh, speak directly to Karen, who I met at National Night Out, who talked to me about leaving her home of 62 years because she could no longer afford the property taxes that are associated with it. In uh, Duluth, we have seen the mill rate, just our part, not all of it, just our part, double in the last eight years. We went from 24.2 million in 2016 to 43 million in 2023. That's a 44% increase. So we have to be mindful of property taxes because people actually have to pay them. Effective and efficient core city services at a tax rate we can both afford and sustain. And how we do that is addressing um, priorities. 
core city services and aligning the staff and existing resources to go along with those services. And frankly, one of the things that we have to be able to do is have good trusting relationships with our city employees. I'm grateful to have Duluth Fire and grateful to have Duluth Police, but also Ask Me chose to do no endorsement in this race. Thank you, Roger. Mayor Larson, you'd like to respond. You have 30 seconds. Thank you. One of the reasons I was able to bring forward a property tax proposal and a general fund property tax proposal this year that would decrease your taxes next year if your property value didn't go up uh, is because we got LGA, something I fought for years for, something that my opponent was in a position when he was in a trifecta to make some movement on and, and didn't in a significant way. What we got was the first significant win in more than 20 years, and that is really important. Also, I will say it's important to recognize that we expanded our Larson. tax base. Mayor Larson, your 30 seconds uh, is up. I, Roger, I you'd more. like to respond. Great, thanks. Um, so thanks for acknowledging that when I was in the legislature, I did actually gather the regional centers and dig into LGA and redefine the formula so that it was more representative of what we have in terms of overburden as regional centers. But secondly, the root of this question is important. We received 58 million in ARPA funds, the third largest allocation in the state of Minnesota, greater than Rochester, St. Cloud, and Mankato combined. So how those have been used and how they impact our ongoing budget is significant, and we're going to have to be really fiscally prudent. Thank you, forward. Roger. All right, I know this is a very contentious issue. We do want to move on uh, to another question. We want to get back to our viewer questions here. Uh, this one comes from Kaylee in Kenwood. As mayor, how will you support and protect the LGBTQ plus and BIPOC folks in this city? Roger, we begin with you. Oh, great. Thanks, Kaylee, for that question. You know, one of the things that we need to do is be a welcoming community to all. And I know that not everybody out there wants to be as welcoming as maybe Kaylee is in her question. And I think we have the opportunity as leaders to represent that. LGBTQ, um, the BIPOC community, frankly right now both our Palestinian and our Jewish residents who are seeing tension going on in the Middle East, we have the opportunity to say that in our community all are welcome even if people represent different parts of the community that maybe we're unfamiliar with or less comfortable with. And a lot of that is just being there and participating and giving voice to and giving the opportunity for an entire diversity of Duluthians uh, to serve. Serve on our commissions, serve on our boards, serve on our authority appointees, be visible in our community, be making those contributions. What I learned in the marriage equality fight was that when we got to know each other, we learned to love each other. Thank you, Roger. And Mayor Larson, uh, how would you support and protect the LGBTQ plus and BIPOC folks in our community? Well, this is a great question. Thank you for it. Uh, when I took office, we had an MEI, which is one of the ways, a national designation of human rights. Uh, we had a score, well, I think it was like 52 or 56. We are now 100. Some of that is because we have done very specific policies. There are spaces in our public buildings where everybody gets to go to the bathroom. We have an NGBTQAI plus commission that we have formed, an African Heritage Commission, which we have formed, which was with the council. So I, I, I want to not take other people's credit, but we staff those, we invest in those. We have the Indigenous Commission. We trust the voices of community to lead us forward. There are also important policies that mayors have to lead on. It isn't just about talking. It's about taking action. It's about showing up when it counts, when it's private, when it's not on social media. It's about policies that don't allow for uh, discrimination of services based on your identity, on your pronouns, on how you uh, choose to uh, represent yourself. It's about specific policy action too. Mayor Larson, thank you. Uh, Roger, you have 30 seconds to respond. Sure, um, thank you. I just think this is a great opportunity for both of us to say to everyone listening, all are welcome in our community. Thank you so much, Roger. Our next question, after Duluth voters last year shot down a tax increase to pay for care and improvements to the city parks, what is the way forward for funding, maintenance, and upgrades to the city parks? Mayor Larson, we're gonna begin with you. Great, we, are, we have just passed with the city council last night uh, support for a 10-year four-phase parks plan that will invest $36 million into our parks citywide. It's, it's not a new tax. 
it's something you're already paying, and it's what you're paying into the West Duluth corridor of parks. It will, leave, it will be applied citywide. Several things are going to happen. We are going to be investing in facilities, uh, whether it's Wade or Freiburger. We have a task force that I've asked Todd Fedora to help chair to move towards an indoor sports facility. Uh, we are, I have always, every step of the way, uh, maintained our staffing levels within parks and parks maintenance. My opponent cannot say that, and that is not just uh, related to allocation or re unallocation from Governor Pawlenty. It's important where we spend our money. This is a core service, making sure that people have beautiful parks and places to be, places to connect. Uh, we were just in Lincoln Park today where we invested $4.5 million. Larson, dollars. Thank you so much. Roger, the same question. Sure. Uh, after Duluth voters shot down that tax increase, what is the way forward for funding, maintenance, and upgrades for city parks? Sure. And first of all, I want to acknowledge that I know there are some out there that are unhappy that after voting against the park levy, that the 50-50 um, tax was changed during the last legislative session. And yet it does give us an, another revenue stream to look at our parks and our recreation assets. You know, as we move forward, though, we have to think of a couple things. First of all, we have to take a systems approach. We have to look at where the hubs are and where we can connect those hubs to kind of the spokes that are out in our neighborhood, whether they're the youth outdoor hockey rinks, whether they're the softball fields that both Mayor Larson and I had a chance to chat about just earlier this week. And then we have to be really intentional about where do we engage our residents who are passionate about those different youth activities so that they can have ownership as we move forward in both programming and a little less burden on the maintenance side and the financial side and then also the partnerships that we have with other entities the school district the county uh, nonprofits like the Valley Youth Center Boys and Girls Club thank you Roger we want to move on now to what's been a fierce debate in the city for years over what to do about the city's golf courses particularly Lester but also fixes to anger what's the right way forward for Duluth golf and the space that those courses occupy Roger you have one minute sure and first of all um, I am interested in restarting the conversation about a different future for Lester it isn't the only land that we have in Duluth that's available to build on. We have passionate groups that are interested in a future for it, not just golfers, but also birders. Um, Sam Cook, thank you for talking to me about the opportunity for dark skies there. Um, once we lose these green spaces, they don't come back. And yet there is an opportunity to both and, to have housing development as well as to maintain 18 holes of public golf there. But we need to sit down and talk that through and see what's viable and what isn't. And citizens can't submit I mean, they can submit RFPs, but they're not going to be able to do it in a way that's going to be successful. And Dan, to your question, it's one thing. It's nonprofit management of both Anger and Lester, engaging the passionate residents who want to have oversight, who want to hire the um, leaders and the staff that are going to maintain it, who can accept volunteering, accept cash, cash contributions, and other donations. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Mayor Larson, if uh, re-elected, what's the right way forward for Duluth Golf in the space the courses occupy? Thank you for the question. And this is where details matter because what I haven't heard from my opponent is any strategy, any of the deliverables on what it would look like to keep two golf courses open. I fully believe that it is one of my responsibilities as your mayor to have affordable recreation, full stop. You should have public golf, but it should be quality public golf. You don't deserve two poorly maintained, disinvested golf courses. You deserve a beautiful experience, and that is what we have spent since 2015 developing a plan to get done. We actually have a financial plan to put $5 million in at Anchor. It's going to be gorgeous. I don't know what the financial plan is to make Lester work because it doesn't work. We have had this go through the City Council, the Parks Commission, a golf group. We've had several RFPs. Nothing has come in. And finally, we can't talk about needing more housing and needing to expand the tax base while protecting a few at one specific site without thinking of the greatest good. Mayor Larson, thank you. Roger, you have 30 seconds to Great. respond. I mean, it doesn't work because we're committed to it not working, it seems. When you sit down and visit with smart people who have been involved with golf, who have been involved with other golf courses, and you take a look at the potential that nonprofit management might bring, 
it does work. It can work. Slight green fee increases and annual pass increases would have made the uh, lesser a net neutral, but that's not sufficient. We have to look at the year-round activities that will keep it moving forward and keep it active. Right. And that's engaging um, passionate residents. Roger, thank you. Uh, 30 seconds to respond as well, Mayor Larson. Yes, thank you. I feel very strongly this is where we are hearing short-sighted politics of the moment to chase the campaign. Uh, and the reason is this. I fully trust the very, very smart people who have been working on this since 2015. Inconsistency on this issue has a cost. Inconsistency about a direction of a community and a development opportunity has a significant cost. The cost to us, we have to move forward. This is housing, this is opportunity. It is waiting, it is ready, and we'll be announcing it shortly. Mayor Larson, thank you so much. Uh, we have to move on to the next uh, topic here. As conversations continue over the main branch of the city's public library downtown, what is your vision for the facility? Mayor Larson, we, we're gonna start with you. Thank you, I'm thrilled about a vision. This is a, a facility in a building that doesn't work. It's, it's leaking, the HVAC is terrible, the windows are terrible, the building itself does not work for staff. Uh, it is very constricted and it isn't very flexible. It is a building that has served its time. We have full city site control over an entire city block. My vision is to fix that building with the library to pair it with the workforce development services which we currently pay rent on and that rent could be moved towards payment of the library. This frees us up in a substantial way because a standalone library isn't eligible for bonding or other dollars, but an integrated service delivery system is. This is where we would provide some behavioral health services which we're already providing and investing in through expanded security and police presence. This is where we could have Lake Superior College and others play a role. This is building in a significant way and an investment on a downtown corner that is going to be bursting at the same time. It's very exciting. Mayor Larson, thank you. The same question for you, Roger. As conversations continue over the city's public library, what is your vision for that facility? Well, first, let's start by acknowledging that the Carnegie Library opened in 1902 and closed in 1980. Um, and this library opened in 1980, and now we're saying in 2023 that it has to be torn down um, because it, it can't move forward. Um, we need to be a little bit concerned about that. Also, if we're looking at bringing NLX into the St. Louis um, County Historic Depot and we want to have development in that area, that's a, a prime location. I think if we're honest and we look at what libraries are doing now, we wouldn't have a major footprint in that location. What we do is a smaller footprint in our downtown for a growing downtown residential population for individuals who don't have really robust transportation options. And then we would also add a new branch out in the, the our eastern neighborhoods where we have so many of our young families that have uh, the nearest library access up at Mount Royal. So four smaller instead of one new major one at $75 million. Thank you, Roger. To hit our out time at the top of the hour, we do want to move on here to closing statements. Uh, so we're going to give each candidate 30 seconds for that closing statement. And Roger, we begin with you. Sure. Duluth, the next 30 seconds is what the past 10 months have all been about. We've had thousands of conversations with homeowners, business owners, and everyday Duluthians, and the choice is clear. If you think Duluth is headed in the right direction, then vote for a third term, even a fourth. But if you have concerns, if you expect more, if you believe that we can do better, then join your friends and neighbors from one end of Duluth to the other in voting for something different on November 7th. Thank, Thank you, you, Roger. Mayor Larson, uh, 30 seconds for your closing statement. Thank you for this important night. We need a mayor who sees not just the genuine hurt of a moment, but has hope and vision to pull us through it. This next term is about revitalizing downtown and doubling down on housing. It's about a 10 years parks plan and a vision for the library. It's about getting the lead out of your water line and expanding childcare. And it's about getting as many people as possible through every single day, as whole and healthy as we can. My name is Emily Larson. And once again, I ask for your vote and your support. Mayor Larson, Roger Reinert, thank, thank you. you both so much for being thank here you. tonight. That concludes Thanks, our Roger. Northern News Now Duluth mayoral debate. Now, a reminder that Election Day is coming up Tuesday, November 7th. That's when you can cast your ballot for Duluth mayor and a number of other city council and school board seats. 
Early voting is also open now at Duluth City Hall. We have more information on that on our website, along with details on how to find your polling place. We'll see you right back here at 10 o'clock with a recap of tonight's debate, along with analysis from our political expert, uh, UMD Dr. Cindy Rushley. That's right. Again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Have a great night. Thanks for watching the Northern News Now 2023 Duluth Mayoral Debate. This has been a special presentation from